You know, half of your word for me, half you got an erection. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna bring up another comic. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, your next comic, Goddamn Delight. One of our room favorites here. Very interesting person. I'd say one of their credits, they don't have any. <laughs> but any goddamn day now, it's gonna pop. And I'm gonna say, I cut that guy's hair. <laughs> Backstory, I am a barber. <laughs> Talk about it later. Are you ready, Willie? Willie. Oh. Willie, I'm speaking directly to you. <laughs> Can you see my thumbs? Yeah, no, the lights are bright and you're pale in the back. <laughs> Spoiler alert, next guy's pale. <laughs> Ugh, there goes that surprise. Um, you guys are gonna love him. Let's all clap like I did a great intro, and everyone, let's all welcome Willie Coombs, everybody! Yes! Thanks so, so much for that. Oh. That was great. I, uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't say this one, but I, I actually do have a credit. I have a real credit. Uh, now, I, uh, I just headlined a club called Cuck Cucks. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new take on the genre. It's uh, where I do a tight five while I watch my girlfriend get fucked. And they heckle me the whole time. And it gets really uncomfortable. But he does have good constructive criticism. <laughs> so I'm learning. Maybe I'll get a real spot soon. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, I, I uh, actually. I'm quitting porn right now too. Um, yeah, it's been a long time coming. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, anyway. Um, all right. Uh, get this silly side of the way first. Uh, 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 let's see. Um, I got some impressions that I like to do to to start off to to get to get the room a little, a little looser, a little a little a little friskier. Uh, I got some impressions for you. Uh, this is my first impression. Get real frisky for this one. Uh, this is my impersonation of Christopher Walken. Had he been working for a sexual hotline? Oh, hello. <laughs> What's that? You want me to rub butter on my testicles? <laughs> Put on a pair of corduroy pants and shimmy shimmy for you. Look you in the eyes and call you my boy. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> That's gross! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, impression number two. This is a great impression. I, I thought about this one uh, about a year ago. This is a good one. If you are a fan of children's TV shows and you hated your childhood and you want it ruined, uh, this is my impersonation of Blues from Blues Clues going in the heat. <laughs> <laughs> You know? You see what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, uh, this is my last impression. This one's dicier. This one, uh, this one, uh, this one's a little dicey. Um, but hear me out. I think it's, I think it's good. I think, I think, I think you'll hear the impression and you'll say, but then you'll, then you'll hear the, the rest of it and you're like, okay. Um, uh, this is my impersonation of Kermit the Frog after he just switched to Islam. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Um. Yeah, you know what? I like to praise Allah. I follow all the rules, except for one. I still eat pig. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This was some impressions. Just to warm the room up. Get everything, get everything toasty and nice, and, and now I'm on to real jokes. <laughs> Oh uh, man, uh, if you haven't, if you haven't, um, if you haven't heard by, if you haven't realized this by now from me speaking and from me twitching and, and looking in different places, I eat a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and what I what I mean by that is um, I have what they call uh, on the streets <laughs> autism. <laughs> um, uh, I think I, I think I think I make it work. Um, of all the things to make work, I think that's the one I do. Um, <laughs> Uh, would I be lying to you if I said I wouldn't go back in time, 23 years, and not get my flu shot? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. Um, uh, 
I got I got super excited actually uh, just a few years ago. I'm sure you recall we were in something called a pandemic. Um, and what happens when there's a viral infection in the air, but another vaccine comes out of the waterworks? And I'm thinking in my head, maybe it'll cancel out. <laughs> you know? I found a cure. <laughs> I'm so excited. This couldn't be any better for the world. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, turns out <laughs> that's not how modern medicine works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I just have uh, super autism. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's okay, you know, uh, it's kind of a shitty superpower. Uh, uh, however, had you just missed your train, I know exactly when the next one is coming. <laughs> right down to the model and the number. And in my head, I've color coordinated all of them. Um, here's a thought I had the other day. Actually, I was, uh, I was driving out to Muscadabra Harbor um, for the first time. I don't know why, but it just seemed like something fun to do for Victoria Day to celebrate the dead queen. Um, and I, I don't know why, but maybe you understand, why is it that every second town has a railroad museum? That's a weird thing that I've noticed. Um, I've also noticed that every time I go to every second town, I'm just uber excited. <laughs> I'm like, oh, a railroad museum? Everyone has one of these. <laughs> they know their business model is people who have autism who are bored on Victoria Day. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, let's, uh, let's open up some, some relatable uh, content for everybody and just start talking to the crowd a little bit. Uh, this is, this is um, some stuff that I try to do to be more social. Uh, we live in a time, right? Uh, everybody says that one. Um, we live in a time right now uh, where I've decided, uh, out of, out of uh, the goodness of my heart, to uh, become something they call a uh, hypochondriac. Uh, um, I've decided that because uh, right now we live in a climate where the same amount of time it takes for me to go see a doctor is the same amount of time it takes for me to become a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I figure I'll just cut out the middleman. Uh, and in this case, the middleman just so happens to be uh, the doctor. <laughs> so I will go on websites and I will look for things that I might have, you know, um, but I'm not going to any weird websites for information, just so you know. Uh, I, wouldn't go, I wouldn't go to Facebook and look for medical advice. I wouldn't you know, ask that in the news feed, right? Um, uh, but I do go to a Facebook marketplace for all my prescriptions. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, um, you try and find Clonopin for a cheaper rate than Randy in Lower Sackville. <laughs> Can't be done. Can't be done. You ever, you, ever meet, you ever meet the drug dealer who gives you an abundance of prescription drugs and you wonder where they got them from? Yeah. You know, my wife, my wife really needs them. Yeah, Randy, well, I need them so I don't get curious driving on the McKay Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> my doctor doesn't think I'm curious enough. I'm going to prove him wrong someday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, another doctor content news. Um, who, who here also hates the dentist? Yeah, yeah fuck the dentist. <laughs> who needs them? Why would they privatize that? It makes you feel like I don't actually need good teeth. The British are doing just fine. Uh, <laughs> I, I hate the dentist, probably for the similar reason that you guys probably hate the dentist. You know, um, this is I hate the dentist because every time I get to the dentist, um, they sit me down in that leather reclining chair, already vaguely kinky, um, and then and then they open my mouth wide up like the ghosts in the Beetlejuice movie, you know, and then they start rummaging around in inside of my mouth looking for like buried treasure or lost coins. <laughs> are those my keys? I don't know. Uh, and, uh, and then they get mad at you, right? Because you're horny. <laughs> the hell, man? You're filling the wrong cavity here, pal. <laughs> well, you put a dental dam in my mouth and you get mad at me for getting mixed signals. It doesn't make sense. Hey, do you guys know what a dental dam is? Yeah? yeah? Okay. Do you guys... Uh, rephrase this question. Have you guys heard of what a dental dam was? in the eighth grade and then never fucking see one in your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like that's like at least 50% of people now. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's cool. Uh, oh, here's another, this is my last relating to the audience thing and then I'm gonna tell you a fun story about the work I, I work at and then we're gonna have fun the rest of the night. Um, hey, you guys understand this experience. Tell me if you guys know what it means when you're on a date with a girl and she ties a cherry stem with her tongue. You guys know what that means? 
<laughs> Free vasectomy. <laughs> That's what it means. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so if you guys didn't know this about me already, um, I, I work at this uh, geriatric ward center um, just across the way. It's called uh, Casino Nova Scotia. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it really puts a whole new meaning to gambling your life away um, when it just means you could die next week. <laughs> um, I, I, work, I work at the casino, and what I do there is I, I book all of the entertainment, and uh, what I've learned is that um, sometimes entertainers uh, think that the world revolves around them, and they email you that way. And this is a story about that, and it's fucking nuts because it's real. I shit you not, this is, a re this is completely, totally... Authentically real. Um, I got a, a message from this guy, and he, he, a little backstory about this guy, he comes to every rock show we have at the casino, and he um, uh, has a podcast. Uh, now, I'm telling you that because I don't think anyone knows he has a podcast, because he linked me his podcast in the, in, the, in the email, and I looked at it, and it had no views. Nobody has seen this podcast, but he has it, and he likes to brag about it. And he's interviewed some really cool people. I don't understand how, because again, nobody's seen it, okay? But he has legitimately interviewed Slash from Guns N' Roses, Slash, guy with the top hat, Slash. He's interviewed that guy to nobody. <laughs> nobody's seen him talk to, I've seen him, I've seen him talk to Slash, but nobody else. Um, and I just, anyway, so he emails me, and again, this is real, okay? He emails me and he's like, hey, Will, we're gonna get my band at the casino. Who do I talk to to lay down some Fuck. <laughs> well, not me. <laughs> I'm not interested in this request. Uh, and, um, I, so I didn't reply to him, uh, and I left it for six months, and he replied back, and he was just like, why didn't you respond? And I'm like, why should I? Uh, <laughs> and anyway, that's just, that's a real story, but then I, I started thinking about it. Uh, how easy is it to interview Slash? <laughs> Do I just call up Slash and I'm like, hey Slash, uh, love Guns N' Roses, uh, looking to lay down some fuck. <laughs> Slash is like, oh, a true fan, you say. <laughs> Interesting, come, come on down to the Paradise City with the grass is green and I lay down some fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that feels pretty good. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Everybody, hey! Great! I never put that together. I'm thinking of that.